Thank you, Jesus. Thank you.
Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Amen. Welcome again. Welcome back to New Directions Apostolic Ministries. We are glad you are here. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Um, this has been good today, good this week. Amen. God is good. He continues to show himself faithful to us. Amen. And we thank him for that. Amen. I pray that um, all are doing well. Amen. I pray all of you who are on live that are, are doing well. And I pray for those who will come to replay as well. Amen. And we want to remember certain ones in prayer today. Amen. First of all, on my list here is um, Sister Alexi Bell. Amen. Sister Alexi Bell, we want to remember her in prayer. She's in the hospital, I believe. And so I don't know what the circumstances are, but God answers prayer. He still answers prayer. Amen. All we need to do is speak the word. Amen. Speak it. And God will answer. Amen. Um, we want to also remember Sister Rhonda Griffin. Amen. We see you. Praise the Lord, Sister Rhonda. We, we're praying for you and your family. Amen. That the Lord will continue to touch and heal your body. Amen. That you might have a speedy recovery. Amen. We're praying also for the Gaither family. Amen. Sister Kim Gaither, as well as her in-laws, her mother-in-law and father-in-law. Amen. Um, the Gaither family is, and the children as well, amen, the God, you know, all of them that are involved with the Gaither family, amen, and the um, transitioning of her husband this past week, amen, he's in glory, amen, he's on, he's in, you know, that's what this whole thing is all about, What? why we teach, we teach you that you might be prepared to transition as, or as Irwin, I forget his last name says, in one minute after you die, he talks about Passing through those curtains, amen. We all have a, an appointment, amen. But it's good to have access to sound doctrine that you might uh, be ready to pass through those curtains on your own as well as in the rapture. Be ready for the rapture of the whole church, amen. Thank you, Jesus. So that's what it's all about. That's why God saved us, to deliver us, amen. To deliver us from the wrath to come, amen. There's wrath that's coming on this world, amen, in the not too distant future, amen. God's going to pour out his wrath, amen. Just like um, in the days of old, as Pastor Donaldson and I were talking a little while ago, um, just like in the days of old when God um, uh, ended the then known world through the, uh, through the flood in Noah's day, right? In the last days, he's going to destroy it by fire, amen. Hallelujah. They made it through that which God did in um, by way of the ark, uh, ark, but in our day, you know, who can withstand fire? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We're looking forward to the Lord appearing any moment. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And we're continuing to teach and to uh, encourage all who will hear. Amen. All who will hear, all those who have ears to hear. Amen. We're, we're attempting to uh, share God's word with you that you might Take heed to that which you hear and change by that which you hear. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. All right. So um, God, he hasn't changed. God still speaks and God is still a deliverer. Amen. He wants to deliver you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. All right. So again, we're remembering them in prayer. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, for your kindness, Lord God. We thank you for opportunity, Lord God, to come before you in the presence, Lord, in your presence, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for life, health, and strength, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for what you're doing in our lives, Lord. We thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Have your way in our lives, Lord God. Remember Sister Lexi Bell, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord God, you would touch, Lord, in a special way, that you would deliver, Lord God, in a special way, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. You know the circumstances, Lord God. You know what's, what she's going through, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord God, you would just have your way in her life, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Grant deliverance. Grant healing, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Remember, Lord, Sister Rhonda Griffin, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, I pray, Lord God, that you would continue to grant recovery, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, you would heal, Lord God. Hallelujah. Have your way, Lord God. We thank you. We praise you. We honor you, Lord God. Remember, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, my sister Dolores, Dolores, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, I pray, Lord God, you would continue to strengthen her, continue to touch her body, Lord God, continue to deliver and heal, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Have your way, Lord God. We thank you. We praise you. Remember my brother-in-law, Gary, Lord, in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord God, that you will continue to, continue to deliver, Lord. 
Hallelujah. Have your way, Lord God. Touch my body, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God. Rem remember the bereaved, Lord God. Sister Gates, the Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord God. Hallelujah. Have your way in our life, Lord God. Remember the whole Gates family, Lord God. In the name of Jesus. Have your way, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. We praise you. We honor you. Remember, Sister Shanetta, Lord God, Gregory, Lord, in the name of Jesus. All those who were affected by this loss, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Although we ex we expected um, this these types of things, Lord God, we're never really ready for it, Lord God, when it happens, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, we thank you, Lord God. We thank you, we praise you, we honor you, Lord. Have your way, Lord God. Bless and keep us our prayer, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. And all the others that I don't know by name, Lord God, that are going through the same thing, through sicknesses and through loss of life, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Remember the families, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Bless your people, Lord God, everywhere, Lord God, that are called by your name. Help us, Lord God, to continue to uphold the bloodstained banner, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Have your way, Lord God. Bless my wife, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you. We praise you. Remember the, the, the Deloney family, Lord God. Remember all my God children, Lord God. The Odin family, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. The Gian family, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. The Thompson family, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Remember Sister Joanne, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Lord God, you know them all, Lord God. Hallelujah. Have your way, Lord God. We thank you. We praise you. Remember Brother Paul Williams, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, just have your way. Bless your people, Lord God. You know there's nothing, we know that there is nothing that's too hard for, for, for you, Lord God. Just have your way, Lord God. We thank you. We praise you. We honor you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Blessing keep us our prayer. Remember backsliders, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Backsliders, those who have turned or backed on you, Lord God, I pray, Lord God, you would grant them repentance unto life, Lord. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah, have your way. Bless all of us, Lord, with a spirit of repentance, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Keep us, Lord God, is our prayer. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. So we're going to get right into this. Amen. Remember to, to follow us on social media. Amen. All right. Um, Facebook, YouTube. Um, Pie Bean and, and Spotify. Amen. All right. God bless you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's get into this. Amen. So today's lesson we're dealing with, um, I asked a question in the very beginning. Um, what a slide. What do you want? Amen. What do you want? That was Jesus' response to those who would want to follow him. He asked him the question, what do you want? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. All right, so in St. John chapter 1, verse 35, remember, uh, thank you, Jesus. Again, the next day, John was standing with two of, of, of his disciples, and he looked at Jesus as he walked along and said, Look, the Lamb of God. Amen. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. And Jesus turned and saw them following him and asked them, what do you want? They answered him, Rabbi, which translates means, um, translated means teacher, where are you staying? And he said to them, come and you will see. So they followed, well, they went with him, all right, in the King James, they followed him and saw where he was staying. And they stayed with him that day for it was about the 10th hour of the day, amen. So in the 10th hour of the day, that's night time, so we might as well spend the night, amen. We might as well spend the night, all right. He goes on right here, the lexicon lets us know want, the word want. It means um, as searching for what is lost or, um, you know, or you're seeking to find, to look for, right, in Luke uh, 19 and 10, all right, the, number two, a man's quest for God and what can be obtained only from him. Seek, right? Uh, search for, try to obtain, Acts 17, 27. And then number three, um, of what God requires or expects, expects from men, right? Um, seek. That same word, seek, when you see seek, is the same as want, right? 
last week I talked about desire. What are you desiring? Amen. What are you longing for? Amen. That's much of what this lesson is about again. Because we want to stream, we want to really dial in as to what is actually happening when one is not seeking God, when one is not seeking after truth, when one is not. Either you're seeking truth or you you have swerved into some other thing and you're seeking that, right? God is desiring us to to follow him wholeheartedly, all right? So God requires or expects from man demand, right? Luke 12, 48. And then number four, as making inquiry or investigation, examine, question, deliberate, St. John 16 and 19. Number five, man's effort to obtain something, pursue, amen, we're, we're, we're good at pursuing things, all right, or having these great endeavors to obtain or strive for, Matthew 6, 33. And number six, man's desire towards something, right, wish for or want, right? So those are the various different uh, uh, looks that this word want has, amen. It's at, you, we're after something. What are you after today? Amen. This is my question to you. What do you want? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Acts chapter number 17, verse number 27. This was so that, uh, okay, so again, this was so that uh, they would seek God if perhaps they might grasp for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. God He's right there. He's, he's not far from us. Amen. The scripture lets, lets us know he's nearer than your next breath. Amen. He's right there waiting for you to call on him. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Not for any selfish desires, but for help. Amen. In our times of need, God still answers prayer. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. For in him we live and move and exists. That is, in him we actually have our being. Amen. It's our life, our very life, our breath we breathe. It's because of him. Hallelujah. It's in him that we move and live and have our being. Amen. As even some of your own poets have said, for we also are his children. Amen. We are the children of God. Hallelujah. Any child that asks his father for anything, his father does, you know, the things asked for. Amen. How much more our heavenly father, amen, who sees all, knows all. There's nothing hid from him. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Pray for my voice. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So then, being God's children, we should not think that the divine nature, deity, it's like gold or silver or stone or image form or an image form by the art and imagination, right? Or skill of man. Amen. We have a way of conjuring up things and we could we could we know how to te- te- you know either technology. We become very wise in this last day and we know how to form things. We could they even, you know, even the thing I just came to mind, like like uh uh that printing, you know how you could you could print, I forget what it's called, but basically you could print things from, you know, you have you have these ideas and you just type it in the computer and then all of a sudden you have this way, they have this way of printing that thing out exactly how they imagine it in their mind. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Technology has gotten us there. Amen. All right. But even without all that, therefore God overlooked and uh, he disregarded the former ages of ignorance. And ignorance, that's not a bad word, you know. To be ignorant is to be uh, uh, absent of, of, of um, um, understanding of something, amen. You know, there are the, much of the world today is ignorant of God. They don't know him. They don't know what, how he is, or they don't know God is a spirit, and they don't know how to reach him. But and that's why God has, has placed uh, uh, apostolic preachers and teachers in their midst, that if we would just follow through and speak the word of God, 
people can learn who God is, right? He has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Amen. So if they are to learn of God, it must be through us, through our teaching, through our preaching. Amen. That's how they learn God, by way of word of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So there was a time in the former days, the Bible says that God, he once winked at our ignorance, right? In the King James, right? He said he dis and well, he overlooked and disregarded the former ages of ignorance. But now he commands all people everywhere to repent. That is to change their old way of thinking, to regret their past sins, and to seek God's purpose for their lives. Amen. There is purpose again. There is again changing your that old way of thinking. Get rid of that thing. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Ah, thank you, Jesus. Because he has set a day when he would judge the inhabited world in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed and destined for that task. And he has provided credible proof to everyone by raising him from the dead. That's talking about Jesus. He, that was credible proof. He did that by raising Jesus from the dead. So he's the one in the end that's going to do this um, you know, um, this judging. He would judge every all the inhabitants. Amen. All of them. Oh, yep, 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 yep. Yep, yep. Matthew 6.33. He tells him, now, you know, you can go back and read the whole chapter. All is good. I have a lot in this in this lesson today, so I'm going straight to the to it. I'm going straight to it. But first seek and most importantly seek. Right? Aim at, strive after, strive after his kingdom and his righteousness, his way of doing and being right, the attitude and character of God, right? And all these things will be given unto you. He's talking about raiment, you know. People won't have this question, well, what am I going to wear? And we're, well, well I, gotta, I don't have a place to live. What am I going to eat? You know, all this natural stuff. Don't even worry about it. You take care of the birds. They don't, they don't, they don't, birds just go around the eating seeds that you put down in your yard. They don't worry about stuff, where they're going to eat and where. God takes care of them. How much more us, who are his children? He's going to take care of you. You don't have to worry about a thing. He will take care of you. God answers prayer. God, he's a, he's present to heal. He's present to deliver. Hallelujah. He's nearer than the calling of his name. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Deuteronomy 6 and 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Verse 5. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, and with all your soul, and with all your strength. Amen. You shall love the Lord your God with all your mind, your soul, and your strength. Amen. Your entire being. We're to love God. So that's what it's about. God has placed in us something that longs after him. And we, along the way, we find other things to put in that place of where God wants to be in our hearts, right? So our hearts are constantly longing after something. It's always, we're always desiring something. We're always after something. We're going after it, Right? God, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. He wants to be in that place. Hallelujah. He wants to be in the forefront. Hallelujah. In the forefront of your idea, whatever you're after, God wants to be first. Hallelujah. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness and all the things that you are, are you know, we, we're seeking things and we're leaving God to the side. And we leave him to the side. And later on, when we can't do anything anymore, okay, I think I'll go back to God now. No, you, you need to seek him while he may be found. There's coming a time when you won't be able to find him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You won't be able to find him. Seek him while he may be found. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 
Oh, Shabbata. The verb, this word, ahab, a verb meaning to love. And this is, I'm just dealing with the last few verses here in Deuteronomy. The semantic range of the verb includes loving or liking objects and things such as bribes, Isaiah 123, wisdom, Proverbs 4 and 6, wine, Proverbs 21 and 17, peace and truth, Zechariah 9, uh, 8, 19, and tasty food. I mean, everybody would like tasty food, Genesis 27 and 4. Um, and also in verse 9 in that, in verse 14 in that same chapter, right? The word also conveys love for other people. Amen. Love for other people. Genesis 29, 32, Ruth 4, 15, 1 Kings 11 and 1. Love for God, Exodus 20 and 6, Psalm 116 and 1. And also God's love for people. Deuteronomy chapter number 4, verse 37, 1 Kings chapter number 10, verse 9, and also Hosea chapter 3, verse 1. Amen. So love, all right? So this next word we're going to deal with has to do with the heart, right? A masculine noun, this word, uh, uh, libab, uh, lebab, or a masculine noun, it means heart or mind. For we're to love the Lord with all your mind, right? Um, your inner person, with all your heart, heart, mind. When I, yeah, I've been like, uh, uh, when, you know, in teaching the last few weeks, when I say heart, I'm patting my chest right here, but that's not it. That's just a muscle that pumps the blood and keeps you alive. But the heart is your innermost being. The primary usage of this word describes the entire di uh, disposition of the inner person that God can discern, right, to be devoted to the Lord, to seek the Lord, to be totally committed to the Lord. Amen. God is looking for total commitment. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We start off well. We start off doing well. We start off, you know, with the right mindset. We start off, oh, I want to follow God, and we are so glad that he's in our lives. Then after a while, things begin to, oh, we get complacent. We, get, we settle down, and we start taking him for granted. Amen. And what he has provided for us, we start taking it all for granted. Amen. And then we get, you know, as uh, and we're going to get to it at the end of this, but uh, Paul says in, in um, 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse number 6. Somebody put that in the comment section. All right. I, I, I was thinking about this earlier, and, and I went there a little bit, but God, he is concerned, amen, thank you, Jesus. And to understand God's message, like our English usage, it often refers to the seat of emotions, right? Whether it refers to joy, in Deuteronomy, discouragement, Joshua, um, comfort, judges, grief, amen. There are those going through grief right now, uh, First Samuel, amen, or sorrow, Psalm 13, amen. Or gladness, Isaiah 30, amen. Thank you, Jesus. So um, this next word, nefesh, that's the soul, right? It, it, it's, the, it's the breath, the breath. You know, in the beginning, God created man of the dust of, ground, of the ground, right? He created this body. He breathed in him the breath of life, and then man became a living soul, right? So there's the body, there's the spirit, there's the soul, right? We see that right there in Genesis, right? So um, when this word is applied to a person, it, um, it doesn't refer to a specific part of a human being. The scriptures view a person as a composite whole, fully relating to God and not divided in any way, in any way at all. Amen. We're not divided. We're all, we're, you know, we're made up of different elements, but it's just one complete whole. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Or, you know, or as he says, they're a composite whole, but it's complete. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. All right. And then um, this next word um, dealing with, you know, that, that, that might. All right. All right. In function, very great, Greater or greatly great 
abundant might, with all your might, all your power. It is used of a noun indicating might, power, will. As an adverb, it, it usually means very, i.e., all that God created was very good. Amen. So um, God wants all of us. He doesn't want us to reserve anything, right? He doesn't want us putting away things in the secret chambers that we have in our heart, right? Hiding away stuff. No, God wants all of us. Amen. He wants it all. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So again, it's a question not of whether you long for some some version of the kingdom, right? You know, when we talk about seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, it's not that 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 whether or not you long for some version of it of the kingdom, but of which version you long for, right? This is true for any human being, right? It is a structural feature of human cre- creatureliness. You can't not love. Amen. There's 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 no uh, way that you cannot love. Amen. You can't. God has put that in us. That can't be removed. Either you're going to love him or you're going to love something else. Either you're going to long for him or you're going to long for something else. Either you will desire him or you will desire something else. There's no way out of that. Amen. We have, we, <laughs> we have no ability to change that. It's why the heart is the seat and fulcrum of the human person. The engine that drives our existence, we are lovers first and foremost. Amen. God made us to love. Amen. And, when, and when, we, when, when we don't love, when he has made us to love, amen, then there is a problem. Amen. When we try to, because you have to really try hard not to love. You really have to work hard against love, against your very nature. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. If we think about this in terms of quest or journey or, or um, metaphor, we might say that the human heart is part compass. And that's why I put that on the screen on the, as far as the, the overlay, that compass. We're part, the human heart is part compass and part internal guidance system. The heart is like a multifunctional desire device that is part engine and part homing beacon. Amen. So here it is in, built within us. You know, in looking at this lesson, you know, because I've been thinking about compasses for a while. You know, I, I, was, I was thinking about putting together like a, as a brother Alonzo calls it, a get home bag, you know. So when, if you're out and in, in about and something um, happens and, you know, like ma- something major, drastic, you know, like hurricane or, your, you know, m- major accident and you got to like get out the car, strap on your backpack and get home from there, you got stuff in the bag that will help you and aid you in your quest to get where you want to be in that safe place, right? So, I, you know, I was looking at different compasses and things like that. But otherwise, you know, I, I don't go hunting and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, I, but there are times you can lose your bearing, even not even going hunting, just being out somewhere. Out somewhere. You ever got lost anywhere, trying to, ar- trying to go somewhere and never been there before and gotten lost? Amen. Sometimes you can get disoriented in, in ways, especially out, out on the water, which that's a whole different type of compass. Compass it talks that's a, like a gyroscope that kind of um, it moves while the ship is moving. It's constantly moving and updating, right? But this type of compass here that's on the screen right here, this type here, um, and it doesn't matter where you are in the world. If you pull it out, it will always, um, you know, the needle will always go to the uh, uh, north. It will magnetic north. It's called you know. In some cases, uh, magnetic north or um, true north. Amen. It will always point you, no matter where you are in the world, that needle with the red part of it will always point you in the northward direction. Amen. 
north. I mean, no matter how, where you were going, it, it will point, if you're going south, you know, and that's the thing, you know, the way I looked it up, I had to go into how stuff works, right, to their website, and it, it explained it in detail what is actually happening. The earth itself has a magnetic field built in, amen. It's built in, hallelujah. And so um, the compass, when you pull it out, it will automatically go, the needle will always go to, uh, always go to north, right? But then what I've learned through this lesson, the studying this, that sometimes things get out of calibration, amen. Sometimes your heart has to be recalibrated. It gave a story in the book about how um, there was around in the early 1900s, when the, right after, the, well, the same year that the Titanic went down in the, in the Atlantic Ocean, that same year, two other vessels crashed, in, one crashed into the other, right? One went in the path of the other, and it, it wasn't because of, of the fog and things like that, that it wasn't aware of where it actually was, but it went in the path of another ship, another vessel, and it, and it crashed and everything. And so it was, it was big on in the news of that time and all that. But um, what they realized, one captain said, well, he had this particular compass, and he it hadn't been calibrated. It hadn't been, you know, adjusted properly. So he went on because, oh, we just, we're good at this. We're just, no, I'm just good at this. We take things for granted, right? And we say, oh, I know this already. I know where I'm going, you know. I don't have to go to Bible class. I can just, you know, I know, I know my way and all this kind of stuff. And not even knowing that I, our, 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 our heart has shifted a little bit out of, out of degrees. You know, in that case, I forget what it was. It was, it was so many, I forget how many degrees. It was off, right? It was off a few degrees. And so that little bit off, it, it went into a path of another ship, and the other ship just came and bam, like that, right? But in a, it said, a, I forget, all the, all, the, all, the, all the people on that ship died, well, except the captain. I forget, you know, I, I won't say all. He, it was listed how many died. Life was lost, all right? I don't know the number, but life was lost in that situation, amen. If we don't, recalibrate our hearts today in the things of God, things will be lost. Souls will be lost. Amen. We as pastors and teachers and leaders, if we don't teach God's word clearly, intentionally, there is a chance that people will be lost. And that loss can be, will be for eternity. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We're looking to teach God's word Fully. And so discipleship is what all this is all about. It's about we recalibrating our hearts to seek after the right things. Amen. There's a lot of things in the world that people are after today. Amen. We just have to make sure we're, we're calibrated to go after the right things. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. All right. So um, operating this, 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 um, this homing beacon, this compass within, is operating under the hood of our consciousness, right? A lot of times you can even not even realize that you're going off, right? That you're going, you're not on, on, you know, if you're not praying and fasting and really being thinking, being present with yourself. A lot of times we pick up these things right here and we go about and we're just like in it. We're just in it. You know, walking, we're in it, and we're walking, you know, we're just going, and we're just walking, and we don't realize that the light is red, and we're still walking, right? We step down off the curb because we know how to without looking. We step off, and we just keep walking. Next thing you know, a bus is coming, but we don't see it because we're, we're somewhere else. Our minds and our focus is on something else. Amen. Law, lives are lost. People falling into pits falling into construction ditches, amen, walking past the barricade and just falling into holes in the ground. Thank you, Jesus, because we're not present with where we are, amen. Thank you, Jesus. All right, we have to be present, amen. So here, he says, the longings of the heart uh, both point us in the direction of the kingdom and propels us toward it, amen. It propels us. Thank you, Jesus. So as God, first one Colossians three and twelve. So as God's 
own chosen people who are are holy, set apart, sanctified for the for his purpose, as and well beloved by God himself, put on a heart of compassion, of kindness, of humility, gentleness, patience, which excuse me, has the power to endure whatever injustice or unpleasantness comes with good temper. We're able to deal with things with good temper, no matter what comes. Whatever injustice, whatever unpleasantness, whatever comes, you're able to deal with it with a good temper. Thank you, Jesus. Bearing graciously with one another and willingly forgiving each other if one has a cause for complaint against another. You may have a cause for complaint, but willingly forgiving that individual in spite of the complaint that you have. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know what we're, we, well, I, I know, I, I, I I was going to say, I don't know. No, some have swerved. They've swerved and gotten out of the will of God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. No, I can't allow you back in here. You wronged me, so no, you can't come back in. Hallelujah. God, that's not God. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you should forgive. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Beyond all these things, Put on and wrap yourself in unselfish love. This word keeps coming up. This unselfish word. Unselfish love, which is the perfect bond of unity. For everything is bound together in agreement when each one seeks the best for the others. Thank you, Jesus. Romans 13 and 8 says, Owe nothing to anyone except to love and to seek the best for one another. That's, that's coming from the innermost being. What God is placing you. You cannot not, you can't not love. God placed that in you. God is love. And you with the Holy Ghost, if you've been baptized in Jesus' name, Filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, the Bible says in Romans 5 that the Holy Ghost was shed abroad in your hearts. He shed abroad. It means he poured it out. It gushed out on us. The Holy Ghost gushed out on us from him, and it, it, it filled your heart. Hallelujah. Romans chapter number 5, verse 1 through 5. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hope does not make us ashamed. Why? Because the love of God has been poured abroad, poured out. Shed abroad means it, it gushed out on us and it ran forth greedily. You pour water on the ground and it's going to go into every crack. It's going to fill every crack. I mean, it like like a, something that levels out something. It, you pour it out there on the outer cup and you pour it on the ground, it just runs, it just runs and finds cracks and fills cracks and then, you know, all that, you know. That's how God's love is. He poured it out on us through the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So there's no way that we cannot not love. Amen. So here we go here. Um, For he who unselfishly loves his neighbor has fulfilled the essence of the law relating to one's fellow man. Amen. It's law. It's commandment to love your neighbors. Thank you, Jesus. Who is your neighbor? Again, your front row, whoever's right there with you, wherever you are. Romans 13, 9, the commandments, you shall not commit adultery. You shall not murder. You shall not steal. You shall not covet. That's to desire something that's not yours. And any other commandment are summed up in this statement. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. All these other ones 
All these other commandments are summed up in this one. Love your neighbor as yourself. Thank you, Jesus. Love does not, it does no wrong to a neighbor. It never hurts anyone. Love. So that's the, we're talking about the love of God, though, right? We ain't talking about that other stuff that you guys put on, you know, when you, when you leave the house and you get out there with, you know, not that type of love. The love of God, it, 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 you never seek to hurt anyone. Therefore, unselfish love is the fulfillment of the law. Do this, knowing that this is a critical time. It is already the hour for you to awaken out of sleep of spiritual complacency. For our salvation is nearer to us now than when we first believed in Christ. That's being, what, in other words, the rapture is upon us. The rapture is at hand. Amen. So it's time for you to wake up. Wake up out of that stupor. Get your bearings. Pull your compass out your heart. Start looking at your heart and see how far off you are. Or where you have to, okay, I'm, I've been walking this way. I don't see home yet. I've been walking for a long time. I don't see. Let me check and make sure I'm still on the right path. Let me make sure I'm still going in the right direction. Let me make sure, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, I got to make sure. I have to make sure about me. You have to make sure about you, hallelujah, hallelujah. And in doing so, making sure that you're in the right place of fellowship, making sure that you're still going in the right direction, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You can't rely on others to make sure you make it. You have to make sure you make it. You have to examine yourself. Examine your whole your own heart compass and make sure. Don't just follow. Blindly follow people. Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. Follow me as I follow Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The Lord loves you. He didn't save you to lose you along the way. He gave us something. He's not going to force you into his wagon. He's not going to force you to walk. He's going to leave that. He gave you everything necessary for you to put into action, to put into use, right? So you can follow him with your whole heart and really look at every detail. Word of God, look at it. See what it's saying. And if there, you, you, you have to, that's why you have to know it. That's why I'm teaching. So you can know. That's why I walk it, so you can see. We must not just, it's not just head knowledge. It's practical. It's something you do. You can't just uh, uh, teach a disciple. You have to be a disciple. You know, you have to be it. God has made us that. Let us hold fast that which he's given us. Hallelujah. To maintain what we should be. Maintain. That's the only way we're going to be helpful to anyone else. If you lost, I'm not going to follow you. And I know you lost by way of word of God. I know you're not going in the right direction by way of word of God. Knowing and obeying what the scripture says, following it. That's your map. The word of God is your map. You place your compass on your map and see where you are, and it'll point north. It'll point to God. The true north will always point to the kingdom in this in a spiritual sense. Thank you, Jesus. God is trying to take us somewhere. He's already prepared the place. He said the Holy Ghost will teach you all things. Whatever you need, it will, it will teach you. So here we are with Word of God and the Holy Ghost. And, you know, what are you doing with it? Have you just laid it aside so you can pick up your other endeavors and start going after that? 
you know, there is a book I have in, in my Kindle called Unshakable. I haven't started reading it yet. I, you know, I, 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 uh, that'll be next. I don't know. Um, he's dealing with, um, the author is dealing with um, double-mindedness in the very beginning. That's the part I, I have read some of. Double-mindedness. He who is double-minded, the Bible says in James, that he is unstable in all of his ways. You must be single-minded and single-hearted and really, you can't have all this stuff going on at once. Computers are multi-task, they're able to multi, uh, multitask. We, we get messed up in our multitasking endeavors, trying to do more than, no, no, no. It's too much happening right now to get you off. It's too much at, at stake as well. Amen. Your soul is at stake. The, the night, this present evil age is almost gone. And the day of Christ's return is almost here. So let us fling, fling it away. Stuff that's not, not necessary, just take it and, 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 just, and just fling it away. You know, fling it away. You don't need it. It's not necessary for where I'm going. Fling it away, the works of darkness, and put on the full armor of light. Thank you, Jesus. Put on the full armor of light. Let us conduct ourselves properly, honorably, as in the light of day, not in carousing and drunkenness and not in sexual promiscuity or in irresponsibility, not in quarreling and jealousy. Amen. Fighting and fussing and fighting about stuff. Jealous because put all that stuff away. Thank you, Jesus. Fling it off. But clothe yourselves. Put on. Clothe yourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ. Like putting on a jacket. Put it on. Put him on. Thank you, Jesus. And make no provision for nor even think about gratifying the flesh in regards to its improper desires. There is these desires that are improper. Right? Matthew 20, 22 and 37. Jesus, he said unto them, Thou shalt love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. Right? Same as what we read in, in, about in uh, Deut uh, Deuteronomy chapter number 6. Right? Here in the Greek, love, agapeo. Right? Agape, agape, oh, right? To esteem love indicating a direction of the will and finding one's joy in something or someone. It differs from filio, or filio, which is like brotherly love, to love indicating feelings, right? Warm affections, the kind of love expressed by a kiss, right? It differs from that kind of love. Agape is the love of God. Then, with all your, love the Lord with all your heart, cardia, right? Cardio, cardia, right? Present day heart specialist, cardia is heart. The seat and center of human life in the New Testament used only figuratively as the seat of the desires, feelings, affections, and passions, impulses, i.e., the heart or mind. Amen. The seat of all that stuff. Desires, feelings, affections, passions, hallelujah, impulses. Thank you, Jesus. This next word, to breathe, to blow, the soul, that immaterial part of man, the immaterial part of man, 
in the in the New Testament life, soul, and many a many sided word with the meaning derived from the context. Number one, as the uh, uh, derivative, right, existence of all living creatures, including human beings, life principle, physical life, breath, amen, soul. Thank you, Jesus. That's what God came to save. He saved, saved souls, right? Um, again, further on, as the seat of perception and thinking, mind, understanding, intellect, and then and that's Mark, Mark 12 and 30, number two, as an inner disposition of mind and heart, attitude, thought, way of thinking. We, we saw that. We've got to get rid of that old way of thinking. Put on the mind of Christ. Get rid of the, you know, how you once looked at things as a function of the intellect and resulting in insight, uh, comprehension, understanding, idea, right? So there's a lot of scriptures, right, that you can, you know, for us, amen. Therefore, if you have been raised with Christ to live a new life, all right, or to a new life, sharing in his resurrection from the dead, keep seeking the things that are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Amen. So he's there. He's up there. Our hearts are, 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 are you know, up there. That's where it should be. And if it's not, if it's anywhere down here, if our hearts are seeking anything down here, we need to recalibrate our hearts by way of word of God and make sure it's, 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 seek, it's up again. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I hope you're getting some out of this. Set your mind and keep focus habitually on the things above the heavenly, the heavenly things, not on things that are on the earth, which have only temporary value. All this stuff down here I said in the beginning, at a time in the not too distant future, will be burned up. John saw it in Revelation that the whole world, all, all of it was burned up. And Peter also saw it, right? Melting, with, you know, with all this stuff, burned up, melting with fervent heat. Thank you, Jesus. God, re, 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 he renovates the, the, the heavens and the earth. And then John saw, sees a new heaven and a new earth coming down from God out of heaven. Thank you, Jesus. Calibrating the heart. Love takes practice. In short, if you are um, what you love, and that's the book I've been um, encouraging you about, if you are what you love and love is a habit, then discipleship is a rehabituating or rehabituation of your loves. You know, if, you're, if your loves are off, you got to rehabituate it, you know, re, re, you know, renovate. I, I post another book on Facebook, uh, Renovation of the Heart by Dallas Willard. Right? You got to be intentional about this. It's not just going to happen because you think it. This means that discipleship is more a matter of reformation than a ma uh, 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 acquiring information. It's not just about you picking up all this information. It's about you actually doing something with the information you're getting. Using it to renovate. Renovate your heart. Thank you, Jesus. If none of that is happening, then there's no change and you'll just be you. And you will be able to help no one. If I am what I love and my loves are aimed at a telos, which is telos, is the Greek word for um, goal or the end of a thing, right? Um, and I, I define that later. Orient, it's orient, oriented toward some version of a good life, right? Then the crucial question I need to ask myself is, how does my love get aimed and direct it? How does it, you know, how does it happen? 
the, the reminder for us is this. If the heart is like a compass, a homing device, then we need to regularly calibrate our heart's tuning, right? Tuning them to the directed, to be directed to the creator, right? Which I said a few minutes ago, upward. Our heart should be calibrated upward to the creator. Our magnetic, which is, he's our magnetic north. I remember I said on the on the um, compass that red, if you're looking at that screen, the red thing that's pointing up that needle, is it will always, no matter where it is, when you pull it out your pocket or out your pa- purse, out your bag or wherever you keep it, as soon as you, you lay it out, it's going to, that needle's going to go north. It's going to go north. And by way, naturally, calibrate, you, you turn a little bit. You may have to turn a little bit to get it to the north position. You know, you turn a little bit. Well, what is that turning to us? Isn't turning like repentance? Isn't turning like ne- stop doing what I've been doing and readjusting? Oh, okay, I was going over. Oh, I got I to gotta go here now. Turning, do north. Go north. Amen. Magnetic north. True north. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I hope you're getting something. I'm almost finished. I'll be out your hair in a minute. It is crucial for us to recognize that our ultimate loves, our longings, our desire, our cravings are learned. These are things that we've learned. Amen. Right? And because love is a habit, our hearts are calibrated through imitating exemplars or disciples, someone who is a model, who is actually doing it, who is actually walking the walk, talking the talk, and they're actually showing you how to. That's why discipleship is so necessary. Because a person who gets saved today will not know all of this. All these different things. They, they won't know it. But if you've been through it, and you've, be, you've, you've calibrated your heart and your life toward God, then they can watch you. And they can follow you and make it to the kingdom. They can follow you and make it to eternal life. Hallelujah. There's a lot of distractions in the world today. There's a lot of distractions even in the church today. You got to make sure that you're focused on what you should be focused on. Thank you, Jesus. Because, it, you know, the Lord just is this there. He's not going to just change up. You know, he wants you to put enough effort into it so you can make sure that you, he says, save yourself from this untoward God generation. You got to save yourself. Thank you, Jesus. It's not going to happen just because you wanted to. Our, our, and Sister McKenzie, we're praying for you. You and your husband. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Brother Charles Baltazar, we're praying for you. Hallelujah. And your whole family. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So God, he's constantly letting us know. Hallelujah. What world we're falling short. Telos is the end of a thing. So the, that disciple being immersed in practices that over time index our heart to a common or a certain end or tell us. First Timothy 1 and 5. And did somebody put First Timothy 1 and 6 in the comment section? All of it? Just cut and paste from your Bible app or something? Paul says here, but the goal, so he's writing to Timothy, but the goal of our instruction is love, which springs from a pure heart, a good conscience, and sincere faith. Amen. The goal of all this, in, in, in the verses in the King James dealing with, you know, the commandments, you know, the goal of all that that was taught past, the goal of the end game. What is the end? What do we expect in the end? Well, it's about us instructing in love from a pure heart that it should spring forth out of us. Love. Springing forth out of us. A pure heart and a good conscience. Amen. And a sincere faith. Amen. 
So this word end, tell us, which I mentioned earlier, which I, a few minutes ago, tell us, you know, and that's the, the word end, in fact, in the King James, is, you know, right here, it said, it used the word go in the Amplified Version, but the King James is the word end, to this end, right? And I look, so you look up and that's tell us, right? Aim, that which the, uh, which the charge of the scripture, it contemplates the object aimed at by the charge, right? You give the charge, and the end of that is love. Amen. The true teaching that of the apostle and of Timothy uh, would be the consequences of the charge given by Timothy and would issue in and be productive of an um, oikonomia. Oikonomia, oiko comes from oikos, which is home or house, a dwelling. And nomia has to do with, with, uh, with law, right? So um, an administration of the things by which God has provided for and prepared salvation. That is, if those who, to whom Timothy gives the charge follow his instructions, they will exercise a careful stewardship of the gospel message. They will exercise a careful stewardship. The gospel is not ours. God gave it to us, right? He gives us the gospel. We're stewards over it. Even your congregations, the saints do not belong to you. The saints belong to God. God has just played, made you an overseer. He gave as a steward over his inheritance. The saints are God's inheritance. So you're a steward. And through Timothy's instructions, we will exercise a careful stewardship of the gospel message. In other words, preach it in a way in which sinners will be saved. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. There's no way around it. If you follow the instructions of the word of God, as Timothy brings forth here, this is the end result. Sinners will be saved. There's a whole lot of distractions going on right now. God's purpose for, for, for saving us was to be discipled and to go out there, teach and preach the message of his word to the rest of the world. They're dying all around us all day long. Many are dying without hope. They're in the world without God and no hope, and they're dying without hope. Why? Because we're, as a church, not doing what we're supposed to be doing. God commissioned us to preach the gospel, not with wisdom or words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. Just preach what it says, preach the word. So they hear, they can't believe on him whom they have not heard. And that one, he can't preach except God sends him. So if God didn't send you, sit down. Get Move out the way. Thank you, Jesus. Now here, the crucial insight for Christian and from our formation and discipleship. Not only is it is this learning by practice the way our hearts are correctly calibrated? But this is also the way our, our, our loves, our longings, misdirected and miscalibrated. Not because our intellect, thank you, Jesus. It's not because our intellect has been hijacked by bad ideas, but because our desires have been captivated by rival version or visions of the of, of flourishing, right? All the stuff people, oh, it's flourishing over there. Let me go over there. Oh, it's flourishing over there. Let me go over there. No, stay where you are. 
Stay where God wants you. Our hearts have been captivated by all this stuff going on all around us. Captivated. Just, uh, and we, uh, that's all we think. And we start longing after that. We start desiring that thing, longing after it, going after it. Hallelujah. God wants you to be um, about him. Thank you, Jesus. You got to recalibrate, refocus. We need to recognize how such rituals can be uh, uh, love shared, uh, shaping practices that form, that form and deform our desires. And then be intentional about countermeasures. Countermeasures by way of word of God. You recognize what's going on. Oh, I got to fix that. Lord, give me a word. And he opens up the word of God. And you find, oh, okay, you start dealing with that. Dealing with that, whatever that thing is. You can't let it go unchecked. Thank you, Jesus. But here it is. It all wrapped up in a nutshell. Our heart should be calibrated toward the kingdom of God. Up there. That's it. Our heart. Where is your heart? What do you want out of this whole life that God has called us to? Are you looking for blessings? Material material gain? Better job? What are you looking for? What do you want? Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus. Lord, help me. Thank you, Jesus. What do you want? I hope this lesson is able to teach, was able to help any of you. Amen. But our heart should be calibrated. And you see these lines on the side here and, you know, toward the bottom. Some have gone back the other way. They haven't gone straight down, but just another, you know, like that. If if West is over here, to, you know, and south, east is over there, you can go northwest, you go northeast, you go south, east, and southwest. But true north is straight above. God is true north. Where he lives and where he dwells is true, is true north. Jesus asked his disciples, what do you want? Oh, we want to know where, he, where, where are you staying, Lord? Well, we know where he's staying right now. He's in, he's in glory right now. Where are you staying, Lord? Come and see. And they went. Will you go? Will you go where he's staying for calling you? Thank you, Jesus. True north. I want true north. I want my heart to be regulated to new, uh, true north. And I'm constantly doing what I need to do to make sure that I stay on course. Amen. And I'm sharing with you that you may be also re able to make sure that you're staying on course for true north, going upward into the kingdom of God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. All right. So, again, I hope you're to get something from this lesson today. And, uh, i like to still have some of you on, you know. I got to reach out to Brother Jason, amen. He reached out to me a couple of weeks, and I got to get back with him. Um, but, yeah, you know, I know God has given some of you something too, amen. Come on and share. Share with the rest. Share your testimony. Sister Gracie, God bless you. Sister T Tamika, God bless you, amen. Sister Rose, Pastor Donaldson, God bless you, amen. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you all. I thank you all for being here. I thank you for your support. Sister Rhonda, Sister Lisa, God bless you, Lisa. Amen. I'm praying for all y'all. Again, remember those that are bereaved. Donna Barber, God bless you, bro. Amen. That was my co-teacher for many years in Sunday school. God bless you, bro. I love you, man. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Sister McKenzie, God bless you. We continue to pray for your husband. Amen. And we're praying for him. Amen. And Charles Baltazar in Texas. Amen. And Reggie and Vicky. Amen. We love y'all. 
Amen. We love y'all. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Again, remember those names that were called. John, Elder Johnny Carter, we love you too, man. Thank you for being here. Amen. Thank you, God, you guys, for all your support. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I love y'all, Sister Rose. Amen. Sister Army, I think I saw you. God bless you. Yes, amen. Sister Owens, God bless you. Amen. All right. Sister Mar Maria, God bless you. And Brother Julius, God bless you. Amen. We love y'all. Amen. We pray that God will, um, will spoke to your heart today and that you're able to share this message with somebody. Just share it. Amen. Your others need to hear it. Amen. We need to continue to, to, to um, you know, again, recalibrate our hearts toward things of God. His divine will for our lives and understanding our purpose. Purpose in life. What is your purpose? Amen. Do you understand what your purpose is? Amen. All right. God bless you. God keep you as our prayer. Remember again the prayer list. Amen. Sister Gillespie Bell, Sister uh, Rhonda Griffin, Sister Kim Gaither, and um, brother and sister, brother and well, Deacon and Sister Gaither, the, um, his father and mother. Amen. The whole family. Remember them all. Sister Mackenzie and her husband, and Cleon. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. God is still in charge. Amen. Amen. As uh, one brother said, he's large and in charge. Thank you, Jesus. All right. So God bless you. God keep you as our prayer. Father God, we thank you for your kindness. Thank you, Lord God, for another opportunity to have been in your presence. Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, for your word, which makes us wise unto salvation. Lord, we pray, Lord God, that the words that went forth, Lord God, that you would anoint it to all of our hearts, Lord God. Lord, help us to be better, Lord God, better for our coming, better, Lord God, for participating, better, Lord God, hallelujah, in this life, Lord God, that we might be able to help others, Lord God, who are dying. They're in this world, Lord God. They don't know you, and they don't have hope, Lord. But we have hope, Lord God, and we should be able to give every man and woman, everyone, a reasonable answer of the hope that lies within us, Lord, that hope that you've given us, Lord. We should be able to share with others, Lord. Help us, Lord. Give us wisdom, Lord God, in, this, in, in the name of Jesus. Give us the mind, Lord God, even the heart, the burden, Lord God, for souls, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Have your way, Lord God. We thank you. We praise you. We honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you again. You can follow us on social media, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, at New Directions Apostolic Ministries. Amen. Also on um, Podbean and also Spotify. Amen. I've been, you know, working with the rest, but, you know, it's coming along slowly. But um, the, and these are the ones that you can see um, stuff at, you know, especially YouTube. Amen. I changed the format a little bit, you know, because I need to um, work on um, making sure I'm doing everything right concerning, you know, like when music I, I play. You know, I have, like, access, you know, access and then there's a certain type of, allowance but then i want to be all the way right you know so that's um the lord's helping us with that so amen but if you missed the um the countdown i gave you some questions from the book of acts so if you missed it go back and watch it amen amen we're trying to help we're trying to teach amen thank you god bless you amen anybody have anything special remarks put in the comment section amen let us know what you think about the lesson. Let us know if it helped you at all. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Let us know. Amen. What does it say? Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. See, God is opening doors for ministry for us to get out there. Amen. Everybody's not afraid of COVID. Amen. Everybody's not afraid. Everybody, you know, realize that there's nothing greater. At There's something greater, you know, uh, at bay here, you know. That, that greater is, is souls. Souls are at stake. At, in these days, in these last few moments, souls are at stake, you know. That's the real thing right there. You know, souls being lost forever. Thank you, Jesus. All right, so that's all I'm going to say. 
God bless you. God keep you as our prayer. Again, thank you for being here. Amen. God bless.